guys, Soundset Gaming, one of you today, and today I made more custom arrows, aka elemental arrows, each with two versions. First, I want to get one thing out of the way. I do have a bit of a cold, so I have to cough or sneeze at some point or something, of my, or my voice sounds weird. I'll try to do something about it. I'll try to cut the irritating parts out if I do have a cough, but yeah, just bear with me so I'm gonna demonstrate what I made so I wanted to do even more custom arrows but this time I also went for another selection system it's basically just you can use hotkeys just like 9 is water arrow 8 is fire arrow 7 is earth and 6 is air so we're just gonna start with water I'm just gonna shoot my bone just gonna make sure but this is okay so yeah this is just water arrow it just creates water and it cleans it up so yeah it just creates a pocket of water for a while which you can use to kind of trap people and stuff and uh, yeah that's pretty cool next is the fire arrow <coughs> the fire arrow basically just creates fire pretty simple pretty straightforward just fire and I'll explain how all of these work. Uh, the fire doesn't clean itself up, I think. It just stays there till it kind of burns out or spreads. Depends on what block it is and if you have fire spread on or not. But that should just eventually burn out. And you could make it so that it also deletes the fire. Now, next is the earth arrow. Now, this one is actually pretty funny. It just drops stone. A lot of stone. And... You can kind of use this to block people, like just kind of block their way or sh try to lock them up in the stone. That kind of stuff. I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, the stone one does make a lot of uh, really big mess, though. A really big mess. So, yeah. Because it just leaves stone blocks everywhere. Okay, and then last but not least, we have the air arrow. Now, to, for this one, to actually do something because I actually have to spawn some mobs because without mobs it actually do, or players it actually doesn't do anything and as you can see it just launches them up in the air a bit so oh shit no wait just a minute kill the arrows and you can just kind of keep doing it to kill them I think I forgot to kill the arrow in this system, but yeah, I'll fix that in just a minute. So yeah, you can kind of use this to launch things and people, and uh, yeah. But that's not all. If I go to game mode zero to see my level, oh fuck, uh, I can do shit, 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 shit. No creeper. Okay, sorry. Oh fuck. Um, shit. Mob giving is off, but I would like to not die. Okay, I think it's leaving me alone now. But if I give myself 30 levels here, go back into game mode 1. I just want to make sure I had 30 levels and I just shoot the water arrow again. I didn't do anything but just have 30 levels. And now it also summons ice for a while, which completely traps the pe person or entity you are shooting the arrow at. And if, if I now shoot a fire arrow, it also summons an explosion, which also does some damage to the player. If I now summon an earth arrow, it's just explosions galore and it just launches the blocks everywhere and kind of destroys them actually. But yeah, it's just complete destruction, the earth arrow uh, in uh, level 30 mode, the master version I call it. And then we have the arrow, so I'm again going to spawn some mobs, the air arrow without, with level 3 I think also does something without mobs, not really sure, but if I shoot this, it not only launches them in the air by just TPing them, it also, yeah, just kind of, well, you know, it just kind of explosions. And I've only just now noticed that 3 out of 4 of the master versions involve explosions, but yeah. Let's get to explaining how this shit works. So, uh, this right here is the selection system. It's mostly pretty simple. The earth arrow is a bit tricky with selection. But yeah, basically the first one is just testing if you are holding the an item named the water arrow. 
fire arrow, earth arrow, or air arrow. So it could be any items. Just have to give them those names. And they, they have to be in this order in these slots. You could change up the slot, but that you would have to do that in the command block. And uh, yeah, that's basically just a quick selection where if you like the tail roll where, way I did in the other custom arrows videos better, you can also use that for this system just to trigger this. Pretty simple. So yeah. And it's just basically setting uh, some of these redstone blocks, to red, some of these to redstone blocks, to block the systems from actually activating and working. So that these are all not working because they're blocked by the redstone blocks, except for this one, because this one's the air arrow, and that's one I've selected right now. The only thing that's a little bit tricky with this one is um, I've got some extras, which is basically for this one right here because this is a really fast clock this is basically a clock that's constantly summoning the fallen sand I'll get to that command later but uh, activate and deactivate this clock basically if I act if I choose anything that's not the earth arrow it will set this block to air so that the clock isn't working and when I choose something uh, the earth arrow it will I can look it up right here it will clone this block which has the command in it for this clock to work to over here and then this extra command block sets the here a redstone block because if you don't update the redstone block the clock still doesn't work so yeah that's basically how I activate and deactivate this clock with the selection I just remove this block when the earth arrow is not selected and when it is I renew the redstone block and clone that command block over here and then I have the slash title command set up here telling you which arrow you selected, which is basically just title, FP title, text, air arrow selected, or whatever arrow selected. And yeah, for the rest, it's just a bunch of set blocks setting these redstone blocks to air and back to redstone blocks and all that stuff. Then let's start at the water arrow. Now, ah, not actually with this one. Okay. I don't. And then I wonder which one I did have that on. But yeah, okay. So basically what it does is this first command block is testing for an arrow that's in ground 1B. Basically meaning that it's stuck in the ground. Um, yeah, it can be in a mob I think. But yeah, basically it's try uh, testing if it, the arrow is stuck in the ground. If that is so, it will execute at that arrow a fill command that will replace this air with water. So this doesn't destroy your world at all. Just replaces the air with the water. Then this really long clock goes on for, so, and for the water to stay there for a while. And then after that, it replaces the water with air so that the water goes away. So that you can get rid of the water automatically. And you don't just have water everywhere. And then it executes at the arrow to kill the arrow. Yeah basically <laughs> it's the arrow is killing itself basically with that command so you kill the arrow if you have and this one by the way this one is testing for level 30 so if you have 30 XP this one will also activate which will after a while when the water's been there for a while replace the water with ice basically creating an ice sphere there so that they are stuck in the ice and then at the same time as it clears the water, it all here clears the ice. Um, now, if you do have the level 31, this one doesn't matter because there's no water to clear, only ice. And yeah, this one clearly replaces ice with air in that area. Uh, it executes it at the arrow, of course, and then kills the arrow. So yeah, if you have the level 30 version, it tries to kill the arrow twice and one of them will fail. But yeah. That's basically the water arrow. That one's pretty simple. Uh, we're gonna go on to the fire arrow. Once again, testing for an arrow that's in ground. Uh, so this command basically tests if for an arrow in the ground. And then we're gonna start with the basic version, which basically does the exact same as the water one, and it just, but just with fire. So the reason this doesn't create a fire cube is because fire can't float. But this does mean that if the terrain isn't just flat, it will also still fill up that entire area with fire so that's pretty useful or it has to re it'd be really high but yeah and then here again it just replaces the fire with air wait what replace air zero replace fire huh this is really weird because it wasn't replacing the fire with air earlier let's see 
I'll shoot the fire arrow. Right there, it should have replaced it with air. Huh, wait a minute. Oh yeah, Assault Flash, it does actually replace it. But that means that after that's been replaced, this one activates again. Huh. <coughs> that might need some fixing. Wait a minute. I'll be right back. 9709. Okay, um Let's try this again. Okay, now it works. Now it just clears it. I don't know, uh, that was really weird. Okay, so that's fixed. Just ignore that. It, uh, it's fixed now. Basically what I had is I had it constantly renew this comparator when it's activated. Which basically would make it send out multiple signals. So that when it clears the fire, it is also placing the fire again. So, not really a good idea. Again, testing for the 30 levels here. Just gonna move on. Testing for 30 levels, and if it has those 30 levels, it will also summon a creeper at the arrow with a fuse of zero beam, basically meaning that it will instantly explode. Yeah, pretty simple. Just summons an instant explosion by summoning a creeper. Why a creeper? Because I don't want to destroy everything, the land and stuff. You can replace any of the creepers I use here with Prime TNT if you just want to wreck everything. But yeah, that isn't what I wanted to do. Okay, so let's get on. I can break these two. Let's get on with the Earth Arrow. Now, the Earth Arrow, as I said, was kind of an interesting one because of this clock. Let me just activate it here. And you can see clock activates. It's basically, just set block, minus one redstone block, and then one stone, which is basically renewing this redstone block. A shit ton. It's a really fast clock. It's basically the fastest in the game, I think. And. Why so fast? Because otherwise it would only summon like five stone blocks if you if you shot the arrow pretty far. And with this one it just summons a shit ton. So basically the command for this is just it's executing at the arrow. Summon falling sand. Tau ID 1 time 1. So yeah. The tau ID 1 is basically the tau ID of stone so that it looks like stone. And time 1 is so that it doesn't instantly disappear. And then this system right here is also part of the earth arrow. This is testing for the arrow to be in the ground. And then it kills the arrow. So this is the kill arrow system right here. And this one is also for the earth arrow thing. But this one doesn't act for a block and de-block. Because it only does something if the earth arrow exists. So it's testing for the 30 levels. So this is for the master version of the earth arrow. And then it executes at the entity falling sand. It summons a creeper with also fuse of zero B. So it basically summons a shit ton of explosions at all the fallen sand entities. That's what this command does. Uh, so that's just execute at E type is falling sand. Summon creeper fuse zero B with all the tail days where they need to be. Yeah. And then we have air. So the air arrow. This one's pretty simple as well. Testing for the arrow to be in the ground and then it's executing at all entities. Um, yeah, it's executing at the arrow and it's TPing all players in a radius of five up two blocks. That's basically what this entire row does. So they got TP, uh, TP'd up a bunch. It does the same with entities, but here I have it uh, TP all entities up except for the arrow. Because I want the arrow to stay where it is. Because otherwise it will just at some point stop them TPing them up because they're out of the radius. So yeah, it's TPing all entities up, except for arrows, so yeah, basically everything else will get TP'd up. Including an armor stance, actually. <laughs> I only realized that now, that actually does include armor stance. So like, basically everything, it also includes the wooden boss and the ender dragon, it basically works on everything. So yeah, and then at last, it also tests for third levels, and if that is true, 
It executes at the arrow, summons a creeper with a few zero B, which launches them even higher and also does some damage. Ta da! That's basically the entire system. It did take a while to get all of this to work. At some point, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't clear the water. It's just basically a bunch of. Uh, I made a big mess that I had to clean up before the video because so for some reason the water wasn't cleaning up and I was testing the stone error so it was this huge mess of water and stone blocks but yeah um, now that works it's pretty cool I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one